Okay, so now let me go to the next, the next uh, section, right? Which is dictionaries. So on dictionaries, I want to say that now we have slowly getting to see the power of data structures of collections. Dictionary is really, really, really powerful. It's even hard to do justice to how powerful dictionaries are in this course, right? Because you have to write a lot of code to really enjoy it. Uh, so for example, let me show you the definition and then we can look. So again, we have to do what we did before when you, when you say, I say there's a new data structure. Let me give you first the definition. So usually the things that we saw so far, they are sequential data structures, meaning that there's a natural order. So for example, a list has an order, right? Index that we looked at, start from zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. But a dictionary says, hey, suppose I want to have a, um, a structure where I can ask, I can give it a key. So I can say, for example, if I have names and ages, the name could be a key and the age could be a value. So if I put in how old is VJ, it gives back a number. If I put in how old is Minakshi, it gives a number. If I put in how old is Cassandra, it gives me a number. So this, the name of the person becomes the key, right? And the age becomes the return value. And now you can see why this association between keys and values is so powerful, right? Because if I store the keys and values in a list, every time I need to find the name of the person, I have to loop through the list and find the name. This is an expensive operation. But dictionaries have been created to optimize for you to look up the value using a key. And again, you want to go away and think about this idea a little bit more. When do I need structures where I want to associate, they're called associative or mapping data structures. They map one type of thing to another type of thing. Now you can see, as soon as I use the word map, you can see why it's powerful. Because the association is built into the data structure. The relationship between VJ and VJ's age is built into the data structure, right? So you don't have to search or anything. You just give in the name and it returns the age. So it makes your code very efficient, very powerful. I'll give some examples as we go along. Okay, so I just motivated why we need dictionaries. Now we have to ask the important question, how do you create a dictionary? And the idea is that you use the curly braces. Okay, so as I said, every data structure has a different way to create it. For the dictionary, it's the curly brace. After you create a dictionary with a curly brace, you can add items to the dictionary using the syntax. So you see the square bracket, instead of using an index like you did before, so this is a simple dictionary example I'm creating. Let me run the code. My dictionary is going to store the English counting way, like one O-N-E, and the mathematical representation, one, in a dictionary. So if you type O-N-E, it will return one. Okay, you could have done the reverse dictionary too, right? If you type one, you should give O-N-E. But how do I populate this dictionary? Right now I'm doing it manually. I'm taking each key. I'm putting a bracket, I'm passing in the key. In this case, the key is a string, O and E, and the value is one, right? And then the string two and the value is two. Clearly you could find more clever ways of trying to do this. I won't show you right now, but you understand how to create a dictionary, okay? Now, when you want to get the value back, it's very easy. You pass in the key and it's going to give you the value. So for example, if you look at the output, I passed in the key TWO and I got back two, okay? Another interesting question with the, with a string is, or with a collection is, can I get all the keys and values? And there's a nice pattern here. It uses this thing called enumerate. And enumerate returns the keys and values. So you can say enumerate, pass in the dictionary, and you just get, uh, you can print it all out. So you can see here, I just printed out the two values. If you're interested only in the keys, there's a method called keys, which will return all the keys. If you're interested, all, so here you get just one and two, the strings back. If you're interested in values, you can just get the values back, okay? And if you want to know if the dictionary has a key, there are utility methods. Now, there are more methods which I put in the cheat sheet, so I want you all to play with it.